Welcome to Mighty Machines, and in this video we will cover the process of building mega ships and machines so that you can understand what it takes to build such. Watch until the end to see an in-depth look at how these mega ships and other mega construction processes are created and how they impact the world's economy. It must be nice to enjoy a little vacation on a cruise and experience all the amenities it can offer. You can enjoy the delicious food their expert chefs bring you, enjoy the comfortable and cozy accommodation, or do other recreational activities. The beauty of going on cruise ships is what made it a big industry. In fact, last 2018, around 314 cruise ships were operating worldwide. They had around 537,000 passengers that time and had an estimated market of $29.4 billion per year. When 2011 came, it grew to 19 million passengers every year. Recently, the estimated revenue has been a whopping $27 billion US dollars, thus making the cruises an in-demand and profitable business. Due to the number of people wanting to get on a cruise ship, operators have seen it necessary to expand the capacity of their ships so more people can get in. However, the traditional method used to do so costs millions of dollars and takes about one and a half years to get done. Instead of building the ship from the ground up, the extension Bremer and Blomenvoss was done by cutting the ship into two and inserting an extension between. To do this, the ship including its hull is divided into two halves. With the help of rollers, one section is moved to give way for the extender in the center. Now, cruise ship extension is easier, faster, and more cost effective. Just like what was mentioned before, constructing a ship from scratch requires at least one and a half years before it can be considered as done. This is due to how heavy and hard to transport their materials can be. Imagine a ship's hull alone uses around 30,000 pieces of 3 quarter inch thick metal sheet. This still doesn't include the floor or the top portion of the boat where the engine gearbox and other components are mounted. To make things smoother, pre-assembly blocks are pieced together. Usually these blocks are from factories that also work with houses, bedrooms, restaurants, and other facilities you can see in cruise ships. This is done to eliminate the need for wiring or piping of individual blocks. In this clip, you'll see how this ship is built completely from blocks that are then painted. Once all is done, it can be now used on the ocean. Have you ever heard of a pneumatic caisson? This is an important component of the engineering method used to support piers. A pneumatic caisson is a watertight box or cylinder-like structure that is closed at the top and open at the bottom. It can usually be seen resting on the bed of the water body. Why is it important? As you can see, this 278 meter long, 28 meter tall beam is along the viaduct large concrete section. Viaducts are a specific type of bridge that is made up of a series of arches Piers are columns supporting a long elevated railway or road. A viaduct typically connects two sites of almost equal elevation, allowing direct crossing across a vast valley, road, river, or other low-lying terrain features and obstacles. These are also supported by columns or piers. This specific viaduct is 48 piers high and about 5.4 kilometers long. Now, piers need a foundation so it can stand still and strong even in the ocean. The foundation talked about is the pneumatic caisson. To help you visualize it, pneumatications are just like an inverted empty glass of water. The difference is that concrete is used to fill the hollow section of it after inserting the pipe. Now, let's go to a machine that can go through the depths of the ocean. 
This is the submarine from Navantia. The S-80 Plus class is a Spanish class of four submarines built by the state-owned Spanish company Navantia at its Cartagena shipyard and for the Spanish Navy. They were designed in the late 1990s, received initial production order in 2003, underwent a redesign and rebuild in the mid-2010s, and are currently in production. This 80 meters in length and 7 meters in diameter submarine constructed in Spain is famous for using the bioethanol stealth technology. This means that the fuel it uses is bioethanol. When in use, it produces hydrogen that later on combines with oxygen. This chemical reaction is the one responsible for the electric power of the submarine. If you want a submarine that leaves almost no traces and is harder for other radars to detect, this one is ideal for you as it produces almost no vibration at all. Aside from that, 32 sailors can simultaneously work with the submarine, and it can bring them to as deep as 300 meters while maintaining an underwater speed of more than 19 knots. To top it all off, it's also complete with a fighting system that fires ground assault tactical missiles. <laughs> so cool, isn't it? If one wishes to go from one place to another, one of the safest ways of traveling is through airplanes. This is especially true when the distance between you and your destination is miles and miles away. But did you know that aside from the airplane itself, one of the most important parts of air travel are the plane wheels? During operations, the rubber tires of planes are subjected to brief but powerful forces in both the takeoff and landing. Over time, it can wear out and not function properly. This is why the company Swiss makes sure to regularly change the tires of their A330 after 250 flights. To ensure that everything is done correctly, the whole changing process is left to the technical division and experts of Swiss. Promotech has already established its reputation in the industry of machine and industrial system manufacturing. They are known for making unique innovations and offering a wide range of choices. One of these is the Pro 45-2 ATEX. This machine was engineered as a small pneumatic drilling machine capable of cutting holes up to 45 millimeters in diameter. Unlike other similar machines, this no longer needs an electric power supply thanks to the combination of a pneumatic drive with a permanent magnetic base it uses. This makes it best for jobs in hazardous environments where a simple mistake can lead to a big blast, and millions of damages, like oil drilling platforms, petrochemical plants, oil refineries, shipbuilding, and petrochemical industries. Next up is the TRT-210 Tilting Rotary Table from the HAAS Automation Incorporated. This machine has become famous because it has successfully put the capabilities of five axes into an average sized machine. Now, it even has a smaller size which holds greater mounting flexibility than the machines that came before it. Its compact and simple design is very suitable for mid-sized mills and it can even fit on one end of the machine's table. This leaves enough space open for additional fixtures or vices. Thanks to its software systems and manual brakes, any desired shape can be made through this machine.
This is the large format CNC BPFT machining center from Kimla. It's a device that promises to deliver high performance in terms of machining with its cutting method in at least three axes. In addition, this also uses other controlled axes which make it possible for the machining center to now combine the functionality of a milling machine, lathe, drilling machine, threading machine, cutting, creasing, pouring device, and a whole lot more. It can also be used to process both plastics, composites, and even light alloy metal sheets. All of these are dependent on the configuration and additional equipment attached on the machine. Since the Kimla CNC machining centers are based on industrial plotters, they also carry similar advantages. For example, a gate structure with a double-sided drive, servo drives, and electronic compensation of the gate angle. It also has 20 kilowatt spindles with automatic tool change with a linear or rotary magazine to better fit the standards and requirements for heavy processing of materials. The Xinjiang Technology is a type of company that aims to develop the overall automated systems for 8-inch and 12-inch wafer manufacturing fabs in the semiconductor wafer manufacturing and semiconductor packaging and testing fields. They want to focus on creating more solutions for semiconductor manufacturers to reduce operation costs, but stay competitive. One of their developments is the new wrapping machine called the FreeShare 15-A. This is a best friend to supermarkets that require packaging for items like sweets and fruits. It has an automatic stretch wrapping film that can go around all sides of the tray. Advantages of using this machine is not only on how it can pack 15 items per minute, but its wrapping technique also lets the produce be fresh for a much longer time. Next up is the CBM-12 from the OHA Group. This machine was designed and intended to help in the production of steel chains. The process of steel production with this machine is quite easier than you could have imagined. All that needs to be done is to feed the steel bar into it. Then the machine can already bend it to a maximum diameter of 12 millimeters. Depending on how you want it to work, it can also work automatically by doing the material feeding, straining, bending, and cutting uninterruptedly. In creating some materials, especially ropes, this Tex interbraiding machine interlaces three or more strands of yarn or wire. The one you're seeing now is called the MLT 96-1-130, which is a machine specifically for bridging carbon fibers. To do so, it has 96 carriers on the head. These carriers are assigned to let operators braid a mandrel even when its dimensions are 500 by 500 by 1000 millimeters. Then, we also have the hydraulic tube bender from Bailey Industrial LTD. With this, the making of handrails, race car chassis, roll cages, and other important components are made easier and faster. This is all thanks to the more precise design and system of the machine that allows it to outperform manual models. It also beats manual labor since it no longer needs any human force to work. All you need to do is put the steel tube in the accurate way so that the bending process can start right away thus reducing physical effort and also helps save money from cutting down costs. Lastly, we have the Formec 508 FS machine. This is a type of machine that stands above others in its lane. With its pre-stretched auto level and a much more powerful flow rate, it can not only withstand but also provide high quality performance for demanding applications. Aside from that, it gives operators the total freedom to design any and every decorative piece that they desire. The Formec 508 FS is also very user friendly as it has an innovative graphically driven touchscreen control complete with a memory function making it even easier to use. As if that's not enough, Formec also made sure that it has powerful forming capabilities that can provide extensive project versatility truly a gift for the industry.
is the assembly of the WinGD 12x92DF. In this video, you can see how hard the engineers are working just to assemble this unit. To give you an idea of how huge this is, it's reportedly bigger than any average house and weighs about 2,100 tons. This is also known to be the biggest two-stroke dual-fuel engine designed for modern large and ultra-large container vessels. Aside from its size and weight, this engine also has other charms. With its low-pressure dual-fuel technology, it can now address the market requirements of providing a propulsion solution capable of running efficiently, effectively, and safely on gas on top of conventional heavy fuel oil or diesel oil. It's also very impressive how at just 80 RPM a large cargo vessel can already draw 85,610 horsepower from it. All these perks, while being eco-friendly as it also meets their Tier 3 emission requirements. Industrial processes also include the removal of burnt carbon from glass molds. Usually it's done with the help of various chemicals and ultrasonic solutions, but to do it faster laser technology is used. Through this, a huge amount of burnt carbon is cleared, even when the shortest possible of time. One of the innovations used for this is the P-Laser High Power System in 2000 watts. This laser technology combines high pulse power with large surface coverage and is controlled by a 19-inch control unit. It's available in three configurations, 500 watt, a 1000 watt, or a 2000 watt laser source. This 2000 watt version doubles the energy of a 1000 watt system and speeds up the process more. The machine optic can also be integrated in any production or assembly line, since it's a robust and durable unit, but flexible enough to be installed on a robot. If the optical components get too heated during the operations, its water cooling system will regulate it as well as the integrated air treatment to cool down the optic and avoid dust onto the lens. Up next is this innovation by Pestan. These corrugated pipes have two layers which act as a smooth inner wall and external spiral wall which are made up of high-density polyethylene. If you're wondering how it's made, this video is for you. First of all, a corrugated profiled outer layer of high-density polyethylene is winded on a smooth inner layer. To do that, this layer must be extruded and welded. The addition of profiled hose in the outer layer is proven to increase and improve pipe strength and can be manufactured in a variety of stiffness classes. A lot of things we use today like utensils, buildings, and even some car components are made up of iron. Iron is ideal for all these things since it has higher strength than other possible elements and it also has the most abundant in the Earth's crust. However, the process of integrating iron into materials goes beyond just acquiring it. The Anyang Forging Press, you can see how a simple iron can turn into something more useful. Through the help of a variety of molting methods, they're able to continue their production. They have a machine that helps them shape the metallic unit into a round shape through the process they call the ring rolling technique. This technique is usually used for seamless machining, bearing rings, hub flanges, thin wall cylinders, and many other components. To guarantee that they remain in the desired shape, a glass room operator monitors the process.
As the time goes by, the mattresses we use often get old and their shape doesn't stay good anymore. As a solution, people get newer ones and throw away the old mattress. But did you know that the Retour mattress can recycle up to 90% of that mattress? Once the mattress is delivered to the recycling facility, it will go on a recycle journey along with the hundreds of other mattresses delivered to them every single day. The process starts with them detecting and removing the metal within the mattress. After that, the covers will be removed so that the remaining foam can be cut into blocks. This is done so that it's easier for them to do the next step, which is the shredding of these foam blocks into smaller pieces. Then the process of chemical recycling or the separation of polyethylene from the foam from its original chemical raw materials begins. In this part, they use a special chemical recycling technology known as glycosis to obtain polyol, which is then used to make most new foams. Whenever looking through clothes, many prefer cotton since they're comfortable, but did you know that cotton is also the most common natural fiber in the world? This is why there are also the ones you use to make yarn. In this clip, you'll see that a lot of new cotton is being delivered to this yarn factory. The machines will now take over these and clean them. Once it's set, the cotton fibers are separated in the catering process before assembling those into a loose strand known as slivers or toes. After that, the slivers are transferred into the drawing machine where slivers are aligned and stretched. The product of this step is further reduced so that a finer thread is achieved. Strength is important for yarns, so more twists are added to these threads before winding it on a smaller tube. The roving machine then spins and twists the yarn up until it becomes 60 times thinner than how it originally is. Approximately, this whole process takes only 48 hours of machine work. We've already come to the last item on the list. That's all for the complex yet amazing industrial processes day-to-day -day products go through. Did you enjoy watching? If so, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. We'd also be glad to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. Till next time, thank you for watching.